to the people of Florida, and in particular, the people of the Tampa res um, region. <clears throat> we urge you to take this storm seriously. Kamala Harris gets nightmare news from her own party after CNN exposes her worst fears. And to make things interesting when it comes to this entire story, the very next day, uh, CNN tries to make it up to her by allowing her to call into the show and act like she knows what's going on with the hurricane. Now, the best place to start this video is with the actual story uh, that exposes her worst fear. Watch this. We have some new CNN reporting today about what is going on behind the scenes inside the Harris campaign and more broadly among Democrats who are growing more and more anxious about a 2016 redux. CNN's Priscilla Alvarez joins me now. Priscilla, uh, we were just joking here at the table that anxious Democrats happen on a day that ends in Y. <laughs> but this is uh, this is something that perhaps is, is warranted given the data that they're seeing. Explain your great reporting. Yeah, look, that's exactly right, Dana. And this has been a campaign that was described by multiple Democrats, allies, aides uh, to the vice president as a good vibes campaign. But what's also creeping in now is that anxiety. The reason for that is because these polls are not really moving. Despite multiple battleground blitzes, despite uh, the opportunities she has had uh, across media outlets, there is still not a lot of movement from voters who are moving more towards her versus former President Donald Trump. Uh, in fact, I had one source describe it to me this way, quote, people are nervous. They know the polls are tight. And a lot of us are having these flashbacks to 2016, too. We know when it can go the wrong way and it can still feel fresh. So 2016 is the key here. When I've talked to Harris campaign officials, it often comes up in conversation. Where did Hillary Clinton have her pitfalls uh, and where can they make up that ground and build on what Joe Biden did in 2020? One of those, to give you an example, is those red and rural districts. Look at, for example, Cambria County and Pennsylvania. Now, former President Donald Trump won in that county, but the former President Biden was able to gain some ground there more than Hillary Clinton had in 2016. The vice president has already visited twice. And so that is the type of strategy that they're trying to deploy to try to make up that ground where they saw uh, Hillary Clinton wasn't able to in 2016. Then, too, there's the mobilizing. Talk to Democrats. They're always pretty boastful about their ground game, and they continue to be so, but that needs to turn into votes. So certainly uh, some anxiety and nerves setting in as Election Day gets closer and those polls uh, are just remain deadlocked. Going to rural areas and trying to connect with those voters, that's not going to fly when it comes to her as a candidate because it just isn't part of her attitude or image or her personality, right? She's from San Francisco. She can't relate to these individuals, which is why she's losing badly in these rural counties, okay? So there's that. Now, let's cover a couple points, by the way. Number one, they should be scared because when you raise over a billion dollars, and you've had this amazing cover up from the media and you cover up your own boss's mental acuity and no one's been calling that out. And Donald Trump has been getting hit with uh, negative ads every single day, negative stories every single day. And you're still not beating him. I think that says more about you as a candidate than anything else. And so, yeah, I would be scared, too. See, their worst fear is that Trump will get back to the White House. That's what they don't want. They're willing to sacrifice journalism. They're willing to throw truth in the trash. They're willing to compromise the Constitution or democracy to make sure that Trump doesn't get back to the White House. That's how obsessed they are when it comes to him. And so when you're starting to hear these stories come out about Democrats seeing her campaign for what it is, which we know it's all smoke and mirrors. Yeah, I think we would be scared too, right? Now, after this story dropped, the very next day, what did CNN do? They went back to supporting Kamala Harris and making sure uh, that they give her every opportunity to look good, especially after that political mistake she made by attacking Governor Ron DeSantis. So what happened? She called in to Inside Politics with Dana Bash, and they did a little mini interview in reference to the hurricane response. But once again, you can only help the candidate so much. She's got to help herself, and she still whiffs on these questions. 
Listen to this. One of the Republican senators from North Carolina, Tom Tillis, who I should say is is not critical of the federal response. He says he believes that President Biden should appoint an active duty commander to lead the federal response to these storms. Is that a good idea? Should he do that? I mean, Dana, we're looking at, the, 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 we've already, as part of the briefing, heard just minutes ago that tornadoes have actually already hit the area. Uh, so now is not the time to, to necessarily think about restructuring as much as it is to get boots on the ground and the support directly that is needed as, as a matter of urgency. Mm-hmm. And um, certainly all good ideas are welcome. Uh, but right now, let's let FEMA, let's let the folks who are on the ground do the work they need to do right now in real time. That's about assisting with evacuations, getting correct information out, battling, sadly, the misinformation, and putting in place the, the resources that can hopefully mitigate against the predictable damage. So once again, she doesn't answer the question. She doesn't sound presidential. And these next couple of clips I'm going to play is going to bring this point home. And what you're going to hear is her reluctance to answer the question, which makes you think, do you even know what you're talking about at a certain point? Why are you refusing to answer questions, especially when Dana Bash is asking you that? It just blows my mind. I mean, check this out. We heard the uh, administrator, Deanne Criswell, say earlier today that the agency is down to $11 billion in disaster relief funding because it spent about $9 billion just over the last week. Are you confident FEMA has the resources to manage what we are, never mind what we're about to see in Florida, but of course, that's on top of Hurricane Helene two weeks ago. FEMA absolutely has the resources that it needs now and to deal with this hurricane as it hits and the aftermath. I mean, literally CNN is giving her a layup and she's blowing it all the way. I mean, we know that FEMA has a funding issue because the person who's directly in charge of FEMA came out and stated that. So is he now a liar? Right. It's interesting. And that we also know that there are people on the ground, sheriffs, police officers, local citizens, uh, private organizations that have clearly stated that FEMA has dropped the ball, that the government was caught flat footed, that the response is a huge delay. And of course, that's why you're seeing all of this coverage in reference to Hurricane Milton, because where was that coverage when it came to Hurricane Helene? People barely even heard about it. But now we're holding briefings at the White House. Now it's got our attention. It should have had your guys' attention from day one. Didn't we learn from the past mistakes? I guess not. And again, she hasn't learned from her past mistakes because she's still blowing these answers for some reason. I do have to ask you about another phone call that I believe you participated in earlier today with President Biden, and that is with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, Did he talk at all about what his plans are to retaliate to retaliate against Iran after its ballistic missile attack against Israel last week? Well, I, I'll tell you, I, I, it was a classified call, and, um, and I don't have any announcements to make about what um, happened during that call, and I'm not, I just can't get into private diplomatic conversations on this um, okay. channel, but, but it, was a, it was an important call. Oh, it's classified all of a sudden. I mean, you answered in the 60 Minutes interview. You've also had plenty to say when you were trying to criticize Trump over that. You had a lot to say during the presidential debate, but now you don't want to speak on it. You know why that is? Because she doesn't know what she's talking about. I don't really think she understands what's going on over there. And I don't think she really understands how to govern. That's not a personal attack. I just look at the results. Look how she speaks about all the issues in our country. Has she ever said anything that was of substance and made you stop and say, wow, yeah, that's that's very interesting. No, she hasn't. Now, if you need a quick reminder on how she decides to explain things to people when she's speaking on subjects, listen to her call into the Weather Channel and explain to the listeners what a hurricane is. The other point, Mike, that I would make, especially came through on the briefing from the the federal experts, it's really important that we think about the language that we're using to talk about what we are predicting. Because, for example, it has moved from time to time from a Category 5 to a Category 4. 
It's important that we not emphasize that downgrading has happened because, in fact, the difference between Category 5 and Category 4 in terms of the danger and the damage is pretty much the same. So if they're pretty much the same, then why would we have a Category 4 or a Category 5? I'm not understanding that. You know, the interesting thing is I don't know why she chose to even call in and talk about what a hurricane is. Oh, I know. Because this is political for her. She didn't call in during Hurricane Helene. When's the last time you heard her talking about a hurricane over the past three and a half years? Never. Now, all of a sudden, she's trying to make these media rounds. and She's trying to speak on all these news channels because of what? She's trying to get elected. She truly doesn't care about people. And you know what's interesting? I think her boss, President Joe Biden, knows this. And I don't think he likes it. Because when he was asked a very particular question about her and her communication with Governor DeSantis. I think Joe Biden threw her under the bus. Listen to this. Mr. President, does Governor DeSantis need to take Vice President uh, Harris's calls? All I can tell you is that I'm talking to Governor DeSantis. He's been very gracious. He's thanked me for all we've done. He knows what we're doing. And, uh, and I think that's important. Okay, so if you're getting value from this video, do me a favor, please. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel. If you want to support us further, you can go to the link in the description below. Grab yourself a t-shirt like the one that I'm wearing or buy us a cup of coffee. Now, does Governor DeSantis really need to take a vice president's call in reference to the hurricane response? Absolutely not. Why? Because Governor DeSantis is the commander in chief of Florida and he needs to speak to the commander in chief of America. I think we spoke about this already. But again, she plays no role in this. She has nothing to do with this process. The only reason why she's involved is for political reasons. And again, that's why I think Joe Biden said what he said. But let's not only hear from Joe Biden. Let's hear what Governor Ron DeSantis had to say. And I heard what you said about Vice President Harris and the phone call. Did she ever get through? You know, Brett, like I said, my job is to marshal resources and work with everybody to have an effective response. If I And she thinks it should be about her. If I honestly thought that there was something to be gained, I would pick up the phone and call her. The fact of the matter is she has no role in this process. She's not part of the chain of command. I am working with President Biden and FEMA and our state and local partners, and we're getting the job done. She has never been interested in any of the storms we've had in the state of Florida for her entire time as vice president. Now she's out there attacking me because I'm not catering to her whims. All she's trying to do is inject herself to be a part of her political campaign. I don't have time for political games. We've got a job to do. We got people's lives on the line, and that is our sole focus. So once again, there she is getting destroyed, not only by Governor Ron DeSantis, but by her own boss. She was destroyed yesterday by CNN. They've been trying to make it up to her by inviting her back on to act like she knows everything that's going on with the hurricane, uh, which, again, I think blew up in her face. Um, it led to this other part of CNN where a Trump secretary goes on and starts exposing them for the lies that has been told during this entire failed response from Hurricane Helene. And you know what they end up doing? They cut her feed at the end so they can do the phone call that we heard with Kamala Harris. Check out this exchange. And this is not the first time we've seen the White House and the Biden-Harris administration botch a crisis. We saw it in Afghanistan. They left Americans behind there. We saw it in East Palestine, Ohio, where Kamala Harris never visited and Joe Biden took months okay. to actually go to tour the destination from the train derailment. We saw it in Maui, Hawaii, where residents are still saying the federal government was not there to help them. This situation is no different. And we will take the word of residents in North Carolina and Florida and Georgia who have been left behind over the, the word of this administration, which has repeatedly been caught in lies. Also the word of a Republican member of Congress who says that these rumors that Donald Trump has been pushing in part, the things he's been saying is not true. You say that you haven't heard Kamala Harris answer a question. I'm just going to leave it here. But I'm not hearing you answer the question of why it was okay for the Trump, administra for the Trump administration to use disaster relief funds in order to deal with migrants in 2019. And it is now completely not okay and something he's hitting the administration on now. We're going to leave it there because I offered you three times to give me the answer and I'm not getting it. We'll talk more. Thank you. John. Yeah. So CNN does not want to support the narrative that every step of the way when it comes to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, it has been a catastrophe in the way that they've responded.
I mean, we can go down the line on every single major issue over the past three and a half years. You will see a trend that the administration likes to drag their feet. They do not look to get results immediately for the American people. And why is that? Because clearly it's not about the American people and they're more focused on stopping Trump than they are in actually doing their job. So when Democrats start leaking that they fear her campaign uh, is like Hillary Clinton from 2016, it's got to be one of the worst fears that she has as a candidate to come up short and be embarrassed like that, like Hillary Clinton was, and to come to the realization that you as a candidate is not what's right for this country. You as a candidate was thrown into this. You as a candidate didn't earn this, right? I mean, that's what it is. And when she loses, it'll be the worst thing ever for them. We saw what happened to the Democrats the last time that uh, Trump won, right? We saw their faces. They all broke down and started crying, but the country went on, right? And it wasn't what they said it was going to be. So just maybe uh, Kamala Harris should be focusing on um, doing what she should be doing as the vice president of the United States and not trying to look good for the cameras so that she can get votes. So that's my opinion. What about you guys? What do you guys think about this? A uh, ridiculous uh, story that came out exposing her worst fear when the Democrats start leaking that they see her campaign just like Hillary Clinton in 2016. I mean, that's got to be the worst thing ever. And then obviously CNN tries to make it up to her by allowing her to call into the show. She fumbles that as well. And then when the Trump press secretary comes on exposing them for their lies, they cut the feed. Why is that? Well, I want to know what your thoughts are and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. And if you want to see these new polls that just dropped today showing that Trump is surging and Kamala is nosediving, click on the video that's coming up right now.